When the socialist animals send their biggest bugs in a feeble attempt to halt the spread of managed democracy, we'll be there to greet them with some of freedom's biggest guns. I'm about to show y'all a loadout that can crack any carry pace and cull any horde, giving our team the breathing room they need to wipe the planet clean of the terminated filth. Welcome to the SES Emperor of Democracy. My name is Commissar Kai. And today, we're going to be supporting our team of random squad mates by being the dedicated anti-giant freak specialist. Chargers and Titans can be difficult foes to handle, unless you come packing the commando and expendable anti-tank combo. If you time your callings right, you will always have at least six armor-piercing rockets to remind these dumb animals who's on the top of the food chain in our galaxy. Backed up by the best horde clearing primary, some orbital Gatlin support, and a little love from our girl Eagle One, you'll be an unstoppable exterminator cleansing the galaxy of the alien threat. Now that you know what the video is about, let's drop in and stomp some bugs. While we drop in and get set up, let's talk through our loadout. The star of the show today is going to be the Commando and EAT combo. Both these support options are fantastic for taking on heavy armor, but when you take both, it gives you a ton of flexibility in how you use them. Whether you need to snipe a Shrieker nest from 200 meters out, or you need to quickly take on a Titan and a couple of Chargers, you'll always have an answer for the biggest threats that the Terminids can bring to bear. With just a little foresight, you can have up to 10 rockets to fire off at any armored cockroaches that dare show their faces to Freedom's champions. Since we're well prepared to take on any heavy armor which is these two stratagems, the rest of our loadout can be tailored to dealing with anything else the bugs might send our way. For Horde Clear, we're going to be leaning heavily on our primary weapon, the Incendiary Breaker. This weapon is undoubtedly the strongest gun in the game at taking on groups of hunters. And since those will be the biggest threat to us, it's a perfect fit for our role as a tank hunter. We're also taking fire grenades to lob on top of bug breaches or to chuck at packs of hunters before they become a problem. But to really bring the hurt to those medium-sized enemies, we're going to be relying on the Orbital Gatlin Barrage and Eagle Strafe and Run. The Gatlin Barrage is fantastic for wiping out big bug patrols or for seriously softening up those bug breaches. It can also do damage to heavy armor, helping us finish off any big threats that manage to tank our rocket volleys. Whatever has the audacity to survive this opening salvo is going to be greeted by Eagle One and her 30mm cannons. The Eagle Strafe and Run is badly underrated by most Helldivers, but it is one of the best answers for groups of bile spewers or for just mowing down big bug swarms as they mosey their way towards you. Sticking with the theme of this loadout, it can also damage heavy armor meaning every single one of our stratagems can put the hurt on our heavily armored prey while still culling the hordes of bugs. You can swap out the strafe and run for the eagle cluster strike if you like, just be wary of friendly fire if you do. Finally, we're taking the grenade pistol, just in case we need it to clear bug holes or to pop a bile spear in the mouth before it vomits its socialist garbage all over us. If this loadout sounds good to you, then consider liking the video. That one click helps out a ton with spreading the message of cooperation and team play to the hell diving community and lets me know what y'all are enjoying. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel for new videos every week. Now that you know the loadout, let's talk about how we're going to use it to support our team. Our primary objective for this game is real simple. Take on any heavy armor or side objectives that we can see. To do this, we're going to break it down into a few key points. First is managing our commando and EAT cooldowns. Since both of these stratagems have such short cooldowns, we'll get more out of them if we call them in more often. That said, there is a bit of a trick to it. We have time to call in an EAT, then we should not use our commando. Instead, we want to save the commando's ammo for when it's really needed, since it can just sit on our back while its cooldown refreshes. If we time our cooldowns right, we should have access to two EATs and two commandos whenever we need. This is an absurd amount of firepower that can be fired off quickly, making us supremely effective at taking on any amount of heavy armor in a hurry. Since we're not using a backpack slot, we can also pick up spares to support our team with more ammo or team reloads. The second thing we want to focus on is identifying when big fights are about to happen. This is so we have time to prepare for them. This can be as simple as calling in a resupply so we can mag dump our incendiary breaker, or to freely throw our grenades. Or it can be as complicated as setting up a full defensive position with our EAT and commando call-ins. Either way, we want to prepare the ground whenever there's a big threat. Finally, we want to remember that we're making ourselves responsible for dealing with heavy armor. This means we want to stick to our team whenever possible. When you take this loadout and support someone using something like a machine gun or an autocannon, you both become stronger than the sum of your parts. 
We drop together, we fight together, and we die together. So support your fellow Helldivers, and they'll want to do the same for you. All right, enough of me rambling on. Let's get into the action so you can see it all in practice. For those of you that are new to my channel, you should know that I will never leave a fellow Helldiver stranded. I really do believe in team play, and I try to practice what I preach. So I see K3 in the distance has been having some trouble with a bug breach and a couple of chargers. He's off playing a rodeo with him at the moment. So since I'm the anti-giant freak specialist, I'm going to take out the chargers. I walk forward with the EAT to do a little more damage, take out his leg. He was probably a little hurt, that's why he died immediately. And then I threw the commando towards K3. This is just to waste a little less time, get me where I'm supposed to go a little bit faster. And now my main goal is to get shoulder to shoulder with K3. What this is going to do is it's going to make all the bugs in the area that are aggroed on us file towards us in basically a single file line. This means that our fire grenades, our incendiary breaker, all of our stratagems, they just immediately become more effective because we're standing so close to each other. This charger comes in, so I pop him twice in the leg to strip off that leg armor. I didn't bother going for a headshot because I was being pressured. But now that that leg armor's gone, I'm, feel, I'm free to finish him off with my primary weapon. You want to try to ration out your commando shots as best you can. Each, you can kind of just lob them wherever you want because the cooldown's so ridiculously short. But because we still got about two minutes in between commandos, we do want to preserve that ammo as long as possible so that we can have another one to call in as soon as we run out. Also, y'all, just my personal thing, if you're doing a bug mission, try to get at least one melee kill. Just show them your contempt by giving them the butt of your rifle. But we were able to clean up this fight pretty easily, and X4 and uh, C2 have both regrouped on top of us. So I figure it's time to move. I ping a destination, hoping they'll follow me. If they didn't, I would just turn around and follow them. But I see this Brood Commander patrol, so I toss out the fire grenade and I go prone. I'm going prone because I, I saw a couple of bullets whiz past my head, and I didn't want to get in the way of my teammate's shot. So I dove to the ground, and I immediately threw a resupply as soon as I saw these hunters. This is what I was talking about at the beginning, about preparing the ground. I knew I was going to run out of ammo, and I knew I had to mag dump those hunters immediately before they started jumping on me. And so, calling the resupply, now my whole team is gathered, because, you know, everybody wants to get their resupply up, and we can move on to the next objective together as a unit. But as y'all know, sometimes we split up just for various reasons, and this is one of those times. I noticed that C2 was over here by their lonesome, so I wanted to go help him out with his bug breach, because this bug breach is a part of the primary objective, so I need to be here anyway. I see him toasting up that charger with the flamethrower, so I know I don't need to waste my commando on it. It's just a single charger, flamethrower should be able to take it out no problem, and being able to spray fire on the ground is going to stop these bugs from walking up on us. But between my orbital gatlin, his orbital gatlin, and a couple of eagle strafing runs, we're able to wipe out the whole breach without any problem at all. And I want y'all to really pay attention to how short these cooldowns are. Like the orbital gatlin, I think it's only an 80 second cooldown, but it's like a 15 second duration. So it's incredibly short. It's almost always up whenever you need it. But C2 and I are able to clear that out, get back to the primary. Now what I'm going to be thinking about is how to prepare to hold this primary objective. I know that since this is the ore extraction mission, as soon as we press the button, it's going to call another bug breach, there's going to be patrols in the area, all that good stuff. So I'm going to be calling in my commando and my eats, because I still have a commando on my back. But you see there on the ground, I've got my eat and my other commando ready to go. So I don't mind firing off the shots of that battle titan. It was kind of sloppy, I missed once it just ricocheted off his head. But as you can see, when you do this, when you put these things down before you actually need them, I can just run around grabbing different anti-tank until everything is dead. And even if I miss or if I have sloppy aim like right there, it doesn't really matter because my cooldowns are so incredibly short that I know I'll always at least have an EAT up when I need it. And since I called in that commando so early, the, the cooldown's almost back up. So I'm not worried about not having anti-tank right now because my EAT cooldown's only 70 seconds and my commando cooldown's probably coming back up. So I'm gonna be good to fight whatever I need to. Now that I've come up on the final primary objective, I'm gonna put together what I've been talking about so far. We're gonna chunk out our eats, we're gonna throw out a resupply, we're gonna get ready for a big fight. That also means finding a good piece of terrain. So I see on my left there that this kind of incline, it is the perfect spot to fight bugs, y'all, because they're not gonna be able to come at me from all but one direction. So I'm throwing out my fire grenades at that patrol, bug breach gets called in, and this is from the objective, not from the bugs. But I know that I'm gonna be really benefiting from being on top of this high ground with all my anti-tank ordnance and my other stratagems and stuff like that. 
So I toss out my orbital Gatlin onto the top of that bug breach. My teammates help out with a good eagle napalm. And right now, because I called down that resupply, I'm just going to mag dump like crazy. I'm not going to let my breaker run out of ammo, like I'm not going to go full empty. But I know I'm safe to just spray as much as I want. And what this does is it just puts damage over time on everything. Like, I'm not going to do crap to a brood commander or a hive guard from this distance. But just setting them on fire softens them up a bit for other things to take them out. So my team's still doing a good job about tossing out those stratagems. I'm just hosing them down with incendiary breaker fire. I'm waiting to see for my prey to show up. I haven't seen any armored enemies yet, so I've got no need to use my commando, and I'm standing on top of a resupply. But I am keeping my eyes peeled for those heavy targets, because that's what I built this around, and that's my job. Remember, uh, do your do your role. <laughs> So I do notice that charger coming in on the right. It's a behemoth, and they can be kind of a pain to take out sometimes. But between all of our stratagems, I know I can take a good, clean shot at this guy. I'm going to try to line it up, but sometimes I'm just bad at the game, y'all. I don't know why this guy takes so many rockets to kill. I think he takes five before he finally kills over. But I have both my eat and my commando cooldown up, so I can just toss him back here at the top of the cliff, run down, grab more eats, keep firing them off, and it's just like, even though my aim is bad, it just does not matter, guys. Like, I'm able to just keep picking these things up and keep yeeting the rockets into their faces. So the Charger's finally dead, now it's just the Bile Titan left, and this is the final enemy for this primary objective. And because I threw down those anti-tank up here, I'm really easily able to take him out by just volleying rockets to his face. So we're able to do this pretty cleanly, not without much problem, but it was because we prepared the ground, we picked a good position to fight, and we knew a fight was coming, so we were able to mentally prepare ourselves as well. And props to my teammates for throwing their stratagems in the right spot, everybody did great this game. But we're able to just kind of head our way towards extraction, because we already cleaned out the rest of the map. I didn't show it to y'all because I wanted this to be a little bit more of a focused video on how to use this loadout. Because the commando is a very interesting weapon. It's kind of like a mix between an EAT and a spear. It doesn't hit as hard as the spear, it doesn't even hit as hard as the EAT, but it's close. And that allows you to just easily take out Vile Titans and Chargers. It's just so much fun to just chunk these everywhere. This is another small detail, but I really like it about this loadout. Because you don't have a backpack slot, that means you can just pick up spare backpacks. Now, this is C2's backpack, but I heard him call in another one as soon as he spawned. So I knew it was alright if I picked it up. Nobody else was going to use it. And I do this a lot, especially with team reloaded weapons. If I see an auto cannon pack on the ground, I'll grab it and I'll follow the auto cannon guy. Same with a spear, recoilless, any of those kind of backpack type, type weapons. And this just kind of further adds to the amount of support you can give your team. I'm already tanking out or taking out all the heavy armor with my loadout, but if I'm able to augment somebody else's loadout to make them even stronger, why won't I do it? I wanted to mention this because I've seen a lot of hell divers when they're, you know, theory craft in a loadout, they a lot of people seem to think that you need to have a backpack slot in order to be efficient. It's just not the case. Like there's plenty of loadouts that don't use backpack slots and there's real tangible benefits to not bringing one, especially if you play like I do and try to work with your team. Like I don't ever care what my team brings or what their loadout is. I really could not care less, but I only care about how I can make them a little bit better. You know, if, if I can add that team reload in or if I can pick up an extra supply backpack and just start giving people reloads, it just, it makes me feel good knowing I'm helping out my team. But as you can see, I'm just going to show you this little example of team play real quick before we get to the extraction part. But um, K3 and I are... We want to help out C2, but they're kind of far away. So K3 is going to set up on top of that rock with his machine gun, and he's going to cover me while I go help out C2. I'm not too sure what C2's doing, but sometimes, you know, the fervor to spread democracy overcomes us, and we do things that don't quite make sense. But, like I said at the start, I do not leave my fellow Helldivers behind. And I figure something big and nasty might be over here that's giving him problems. And turns out there is. It's a big old Bile Titan. So I'm going to go take this out. And once I get C2 all grouped up, we're going to head towards Extraction. But as you can see, I throw down the Commando because I'm going to fire this Eat regardless. And so as soon as I've fired the Eat, I have my Commando to kind of fall back on. So... Once I pop this uh, shot off, there we go, I'm able to pick up the commando and finish off this battle titan. 
Uh, one other thing I've neglected to mention, the stagger on the commando is ridiculous. I think it's easily the highest in the game. I don't know for sure, but like being able to stagger a Bile Titan with one rocket to any part of their body, it, it just brings so much utility. Even if you just completely whiff and hit them in the leg, it doesn't really matter because you can stop them from vomiting on a teammate or you can buy enough time for your team to like get enough distance to disengage from the Bile Titan. There's just a lot of work that can go into the ability to stagger giant enemies. But I hope you all can see how just this little bit of communication and kind of like shared purpose, it just makes people work together, even if they don't really know why they're doing it. Like, K3, was it optimal to sit on top of that rock and cover me? Probably not. Was it super cool and actually did help? Absolutely. But C2, I'm not sure why they wouldn't quite follow us, but it's about time to extract and we need to get going. So. I'm just going to hope and pray to Liberty herself that C2 will be alright, and we're going to head towards extraction and get the heck off this planet. Because I've been looking for any excuse to use this song, and big thanks to Endless Taverns for allowing me to do so, I'm just going to let y'all watch this. I want you to keep in mind everything I've talked about through the video, about doing your job, preparing the ground, and you know, helping out your teammates, and yeah, I'll just let you enjoy. I'll see you on Pelican 1. And that's the run, y'all. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you've learned something. The Commando is such a good support weapon, especially when you pair it with the EAT. And if you've had trouble with Chargers or Titans, I highly recommend you give this build a try, because it just makes them incredibly easy to deal with, as long as you prep the ground beforehand. But until next time, this is Commissar Kai, signing out.